Welcome to Miss V, the Storyteller Podcast. I am so excited today because I have a guest that's on the show and her name is Sandy Warren. And Sandy Warren and I, we met on LinkedIn. And what is so amazing about um, the LinkedIn issue, which she doesn't know, is that a friend of mine kept telling me, you need to be on LinkedIn. You need to be on LinkedIn. You need to be on LinkedIn. And I kept pushing it aside. I was like, I don't want to do that. But I did it. And I have met some of the uh, most amazing women. I'm a part of a, a group up there, a women's group up there. And I'm on LinkedIn. And I just met some amazing people. And Sandy is one of those people. So I'm so excited to have her here today. Um, her and I talked. And I'm telling you, we really have a lot in common. And she likes stories as much as I do. So Sandy, please go ahead and share something or tell us about yourself. Well, thank you very much, first of all, Valerie, for, Valeria, Miss, Miss, Miss V, um, for having me. And what you don't know is I haven't been on LinkedIn very long either. <laughs> but it was something that um, I really felt that I wanted to deal with a caliber of women who were for women and who wanted to support and encourage and simply show up. Yeah. And so when I saw you and I, I saw the kind of women that you were representing and honoring and celebrating, I simply sent you a note and said, wow, great stuff. And then, you know, a couple banters back and forth and here we are. So thank you very much. Um, I am coach Sandy to my clients. And I am also, uh, in addition to being a coach, I specialize in celebrating mid-season women. I, I think that we've been on a journey. The journey is different for each of us and we need to be celebrated on that journey. So that's my primary focus at this amazing season in my life. I am also a yoga instructor, so that keeps me focused on that mind-body-spirit connection. And I think that as women, I have seen that we often, I call it putting our goddess on the back shelf. And we can talk a little bit more about that later because my goddess was pretty much on the back shelf, which is, you know, they say that you coach to women who are on a path similar to yours. You just may be a little bit ahead of the learning curve. So that is um, a little bit about me. Now I moved from New England to Charlotte, North Carolina in 1993. And uh, my daughter was going into college. My son was going into high school. Um, and it was, it was a, it was an intentional move because I felt that as beautiful as New England is, I wanted my kids to be exposed to some differences and something other than some of the New England traditions. So it's been it was it was a difficult, challenging move, but that's where we learn, right? We learn in the trenches. Absolutely. We don't learn when we're when we're out sitting having tea. So <laughs> although tea is important, <laughs> so that's a little bit about my bio. I have. Uh, remarried and um, he and I have been together about 26 years, married about 16. It took me a little while to um, to trust that relationship. And, um, but it's it's amazing. You know, he's incredibly supportive and um, we're, we're, we're enjoying this season of our life. That's great. That's really great. Um, so you guys, you know how I feel about stories. I feel like stories, they help, they help us to connect. And it's so important that you share your stories, not just in your business, but with your family, if you have children and all that. And stories are so important to me. And when we use our stories and we share our stories, we really help other people. And that is the purpose of Miss V, the storyteller, is that to have people to come on, share their stories in hopes that they would help other people. So Sandy has a story that she's going to share with us today. And please listen to her story. I'm telling you, it is something that you need to hear, especially 
if you're married or if you have children, mm, let's listen. All right, Sandy, go ahead and share your story. Well, it started a, a number of years ago since my kids are now grown and have kids of their own. And I was the absolute first divorced woman, woman I knew. It was not a role that I asked for. It was not a role that I expected. And my kids were three and eight. So I became, of course, the first single parent I knew. So how exciting is that? Scary and, um, and obviously a challenge. So the beginning years were that of trying to, I had decided that I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. I left the medical profession when I had my first child. So I hadn't worked in a number of years outside the home. But after my first child, um, I decided to go into Mary Kay Cosmetics. So I was now a woman who was working on 100% commission. And growing up as a child, I was the little girl who couldn't even ask daddy or mommy for my, my 50 cent allowance. So talking about money was not a comfortable um, experience for me. But I learned and I practiced and having two little mouths to feed and a house to pay for is pushes you out of your comfort zone pretty well. Mm -hmm. So I took it from that position, then going through a divorce and about the third time my husband took me uh, back to court for a child support reduction and in those days they didn't have as many regulations as they do now but it was kind of a free-for-all <laughs> so I uh, I went into court the first time with an attorney for the divorce and then I really I mean it was just so costly I decided to represent myself after that and so the second time that we went into court um they send you to an arbitrator and they talk about money and the financial uh, position that, that both parties are in. And um, so the first time he got a child support reduction, the second time he got a child support reduction. And the third time he took me into court um, to ask for another child support reduction. It was curious because the judge wanted to send us um, back for another arbitration. And, you know, what do you say to the judge? Say, yes, sir. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, this this will be the third time that we've done this. And, um, you know, I, I I understand that that we need to get clear. And he said, what do you mean the third time? So he looks back in his notes. And he says, your husband, your ex-husband is $20,000 in arrears. I said, yes, sir. And he looked at me and he said, hmm, that's enough money and enough time that if you want to put his person in jail. <laughs> I know. Fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> I took in a deep breath and with every fiber of my being, I wanted to say, yes, please, sir. That would be <laughs> fantastic. You know, because somebody who keeps skating responsibility should be taught a lesson. Absolutely. And as I stood there and I pictured this, I knew I would have to go home and tell my children who were then, I don't know, and then 13 maybe, that I had just put their father in jail. Mm -hmm. So I came face to face with who am I as a woman? What are my core values, my beliefs? What do I stand for? And I, I did not put him in jail, any part of him in jail. <laughs> and so the story just progressed for me being more determined to have the freedom of choice and to take personal responsibility. And that propelled me in, in Mary Kay Cosmetics because I, it needed to, and I needed to have that income and not rely on anybody else. And it, it also solidified for me that I was a role model and I would continue to mm -hmm. be a role model, not just for my children, but as it turned out after my divorce, of course, you know, there were other women that I knew who were divorced. And so 
it supported them to stand for themselves as well. And that has been a reoccurring theme for me for number and number of years. The vehicle has been different, but the purpose and the mission has been the same. That's great. I love hearing that story. Um, it makes me think about my my mother because my parents, they got divorced um, when we were younger and it's four of us. So my mom ended up being a single mom raising four children. Um, the thing about it is that my mother is younger than my father. So when they got together, she was like in her teenage years, you know, when he Ooh. was 20. 1920 or something like that so and they got married they were married for a while but it was devastating for my mom it really took a toll on her and my dad has always had money he has been one of those people who always had money and so when they separated and they had to go to court for child support because my mom was like I can't do these kids by myself and she was a stay-at-home mom for a while and then my dad was putting stipulations on money. So she went out and got a job and started to work. But the money that she was making was nowhere near what my dad was making. And there was no way that she could take care of us kids. So my mm -hmm. mother, um, my dad, they set a date for to go to court. And my dad, he shows up in court with his lawyer. And he has on his suit. And he's coming up there, you know, and my mom being young and not even not really knowing. And she showed up the first, this was the first time. And, you know, the, the judge told them that they needed to do what you just said, arbitration. What, what was it? when they needed to sit down and talk about financial arbitration. Okay. So they had to do that. Like I said, my mom had never gone through any of this and she showed up by herself. The judge realized she didn't have any, anyone. And so they told her what to do. The second time when they, redid this because she wasn't prepared and she didn't know so she came back again my dad showed up with his lawyer and his three-piece suit my mother with her crafty self I love my mom with some of the things she does she had my oldest sister to come to court with her and she was to take care of my baby brother now I'm number three so me and my other brother we were in school that day and my mom had my sister sitting in the courtroom taking care of my baby brother. I'm telling you, when the judge finished with my dad, when he saw the whole scene, mom didn't even dress up. She was she looked like a single mom. And she must have talked to her sisters or somebody because the whole scene was like from a movie. And when a judge finished with my dad in his three-piece suit and his lawyer, oh my God, my dad oh. was hot with my mom. He was so mad with her, but she didn't do anything per se on purpose. She just set the scene so that the, <laughs> the, the judge could see that she would be struggling and it wasn't an untruth. It was a truth. My dad just didn't want to let go money. He had it. It wasn't that. But he had to. So anyway, let's just say um, that day favored my mom. When we, me and my brother got home from school, uh, my mom was on the phone telling one of her girlfriends about it. That's why I know about the story, because I overheard my mom telling uh, what she did. And my sister, she was like, yeah, because dad was so mad. He was so mad when he left. He didn't even say anything to me and Sean. He just walked out the courtroom. So my older sister, she kind of shared. But that's my story. I'm telling you, when you are a single parent, you have to be crafty. You have to, and I use the word crafty. I'm telling you because these men sometimes, they just don't want to pay. They, <laughs> they do not want to pay. So with, you know, with those stories, I saw a difference in my mom. I really did. Uh, after that day, I think my mom really became empowered because she yes. started to talk and have conversation with women who were single, who were raising. And I remember we moved to this one city, which I don't like. I won't even say the name of it. We moved to this city and we were scared because the way we were raised, we were raised around family. Um, my dad, we were raised in one of the houses that his family owned. So it was relatives that lived around. We had backyard, big backyard and all this. And we were just used to that. It was kind of like the suburban countries in the middle mm -hmm. right in there. So we moved to the city. 
whole different world. But the good thing for my mom was there were a lot of single women around and they really poured into my mom and shared a lot of things. So when you, you know, being the only single mom by yourself, you know, what did you do to help you to, you know, to deal with a new season, a new era in your life? What did you do? You're exactly 100% true. And thank you for sharing that story. I I, I love your mom now too. <laughs> Because it is a craftiness and it is women take responsibility. We 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 just we just put it on our shoulders. So for me, I just anteed up. I I just had to because I lived in in a rural community, um, not farmland, but suburbia, I guess is is more appropriate. And I stayed in that house that I we were married in and I had my children in. And some of the neighbors were really, even though they were married, um, they were really excellent caregivers to me. And they accepted me. Um, just knowing, just knowing me, I guess, you know, they they didn't judge it. And that was huge to to be accepted in that community. And then the other thing that happened to really support me was in Mary Kay, um, most of the women were married, but as I kind of climbed in the ranks and got my first pink Cadillac, which I'm so terrible at numbers, I called the company and told them that I thought they made a mistake with the numbers that I didn't really get that pink Cadillac. They started laughing. They said, no, <laughs> you, you earned that. You didn't figure those numbers out right. So that was pretty exciting. But um, they asked me to come and, and do some training and teaching for other women who were coming into the business, who were single. And so that, again, was another way for me to find my answer to giving back. And as long as I felt that my journey was helping to someone else to not have to go through the skin knees and some of the, the things that I went through, that, that encouraged me and that helped me. Because when I began, you couldn't even get a bank loan. A woman couldn't get a bank loan on, under her own name. Oh, Wow. And so I had to beg, plead, cajole my then husband to sign the, at, the, at the bank for a loan for me. And once I got that loan and I turned around and I paid it off as quickly as I could, I right, marched right back into that bank manager and I said, now it's in my name. And, and she managed it. I'm not sure well, he would have managed it, but she managed it. Yeah. And that's, you know, those are the little tidbits that of our successes that I think we have to take and we have to build into, as you very succinctly and perfectly said, our story. Those are our stepping stones. And when we can use those stepping stones to help other people, then it makes our journey so much more um, valuable. And we can not be negative about it. We can, we can kind of celebrate, which I I think is important for us women to celebrate those steps. They they don't have to be giant. They just have to be the next step. They have to take us in, on, around the next bend. So those are those are. So now my focus is is touching those women where at whatever part of the journey they're on, and giving them you know a confidence, a pat on the shoulder, a hurrah, a celebration, whatever it is. Is as as you said, you know your mom became a role model for you yeah I, I I loved and I mean but what you were just something you were just saying is so key because Mary Kay asked you to you know talk to these new single people coming in but you shared your story to help them and so Absolutely. I looked at the community of women that were around us that were single I think almost every we lived in an apartment building it was a it was four apartments and out of the four, three pe three of the families, they were single moms. It was only one couple. They didn't stay there long. But anyway, <laughs> it was uh, three Too couples. Too much feminine but, energy. <laughs> I guess so. But they, they really talked to each other and they shared their experiences, which is their story about, you know, what happened in their marriage and what they did, you know, to get compensated more you know from their ex-husbands or me the baby mamas I mean fathers and all that so they shared their experiences in their in their stories and then in turn my mom you know when she met someone she would talk 
told them about that little that little trick she did <laughs> in the courthouse. Um, so yeah, but we, when we share our stories and we when we do that, it empowers other women. And then there are people that want to hold on to them. It's like, no, let it out because you're helping someone else because somebody I'm sure helped you. But when you look back on that, and I love asking these questions, that questions, when you look back on that season and that time in your life, what was a major lesson that you learned that you still have with you to today? Because when we go through something difficult, like a divorce or anything like that, when we go through it, it's painful. But when we come out of it, we look at ourselves and we're like, hmm, I learned I'm a better person because. Absolutely. I think that one of the lessons, and obviously there are probably several, but the one that comes to mind is when I decided that it was on me and made that, that commitment to myself, to my freedom of choice, and then to be that role model, I then, I think I kind of put up a wall around me mm. to keep me strong. And as I went through that phase, I then discovered that our strength comes from being vulnerable, hmm. not from the wall. Yeah. And the like wall that. isn't honest. And yeah. so part of what I feel as a coach is that I have to be vulnerable. And that's a part of the story, but it's a part of listening. It's a part of asking good questions and really listening from your heart, not with judgment, because we all journey differently. And one of the positives that I'll share with you, talking about the pride that you have in your mom and, and the journey that she took, is when my daughter was in college, she was an English major, and they were supposed to write a story. And one of the um, instructors had made a comment at some point that, sing that um, children who were raised by a single mother did not do as well academically or as well in, in life. Mm. I can remember to this day reading my daughter's article <laughs> Tears, obviously running down my face because she took a stance yes. that said, no, single mothers are twice, you know, mm -hmm. as strong because they have to be. They're a one parent family. They have to be both parents. And my kids were so great. They used to give me Father's Day cards in addition to Mother's Day cards. Yeah, so. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. They should. Yeah, but my mom, one of the things, um, real quick, I, when I look at my mom and the, that experience, and I was a little girl, because um, it took them a while to get divorced, divorced. They were separated for a minute. I think it had a lot to do with my dad. It's like, whew, I got to pay this money. I, I don't know. But one of the things that um, I look back and I, I look at my mom and her strength is that my mom did not know a lot, but once she went to the court the first time, she really took charge and started to ask questions and try to figure out what can I do? What do I do? And she didn't, you know, cause I, I have this thing when I pray, I always ask God to help me to build bridges, to reach people and not walls to keep them out. And I think yes. once all of that happened with my mom, my mom was like trying to build bridges. She was trying to learn. She needed to know so that when she went to court, she was equipped. Now she was a little, little bit on the shady side. She knew that <laughs> she knew how to be crafty, but she needed to know some other things like the law and all those different things. And she learned it. So the next time she went, she was more prepared. And I think that's something, even though I was little, and I overheard all these things. I, I really remember that about her. So once you got through the divorce and you found your superpower and all that, what did you decide to do 
now that you had everything in order, I know you got married again. So what did you decide to do now that all of that's behind you? Well, as I said, the mission has always been about women. And, and so I became a yoga instructor because it was the first time in my life that I was able to make a decision and do what I wanted to do. It wasn't just about a paycheck. It wasn't, you know, feeding the kids. So, um, oh, the other part of the story that you'll laugh at, remember he was $20,000 in arrears? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. He didn't want to pay when she went to college. He, he, he was supposed to split freshman and, uh, you know, f to senior year with me. And I never told the kids, you know, it, we just progressed and we kept things as level as we can because I believe the kids should never be the victims in here. Absolutely. They should learn the lessons, but they don't have to be the victim. And so he he didn't um, split the, the cost for the freshman and sophomore year. And so I finally went to my daughter and I said, you need to understand that um, junior and senior year are going to be paid for by your father because I've paid for freshman and sophomore year. And I said, so it is now falling on your shoulders to make keep him to task. So, wow. So he ended, about, he, he ended up pay. having to pay. Either that or he had to tell his daughter that she couldn't finish college. So he fit, he paid? Good for you. Yes. I'm telling you, women, God gave us an extra something because he knew we would have to deal with men. He gave us he that little to... extra something. I'm telling <laughs> you, we got that extra, mm, that's something to help and, us to be able to navigate them because he knew. Oh, I love and, it. And, and, and now my daughter, you know, she's married. She has two kids, but she manages her own money. She, she works as a freelance writer. Um, she's taken lessons. She has, she was paying attention. And yeah. my son is a great dad, highly responsible. He'll never walk in his father's shoes. And that's important as well. So the messages that we delivered to the young men is equally as important. Well, and that's true because, and also the children that are being raised by single mom, it does something to us. It really does because you actually yeah. see what your mom is going through, how she has to handle and deal with things, especially if your dad is not present the way he should be as a single father. You right. learn so much, much because we did. My mom didn't really talk bad about my dad to us, oh. but- when things came up, you know, sometimes we can see her frustration. So it's so much that you learn as a, a single child, you know, being raised by a single mom. Oh, I love that. So you mentioned coaching. What does, what made you decide to start coaching? Well, listening to my yoga students. Now, my typical yoga student is over 40. She's a woman. And, and then COVID struck. So I had already begun coaching from a body-centered coaching position, but I moved into becoming a life coach. The perfect word you said was empowerment. Mm -hmm. And the more I heard from my, my yoga students what they were dealing with, I call it wearing many hats. And we often put on a hat that's just expected of us. It's not one that we actually want to wear. It's not a responsibility we ne necessarily chose to take, but we do things um, sometimes to please others, sometimes because it's tradition. There are a whole bunch of hats that we wear. So once I translated what I saw going on with the women around me, I felt I had gone through this journey for an absolute purpose and reason. And that's when I focus decided to focus on particularly mid-season women. They're wearing a lot of hats that they didn't necessarily evaluate what it takes from them, what it takes out of them. They're people pleasers. So they say yes when to others when they should be saying yes to themselves and no to others. So there were a lot of components that came together and that's when I decided this is what I need to do. And I, I trained in a couple of different modalities. The last one that I spent over a year in is called positive intelligence. And it resonated with me because it speaks clearly and it has a free evaluation that you can take that talks to, to you about who your saboteurs are. So example, being vulnerable. My biggest saboteur was a controller. 
Well, no kidding. Of course, it was a controller. <laughs> I had to control everything. But as the season of now life comes along, I don't have to control everything. I could take the wall down. I could wear the hat that I chose to wear. And, and it's, it's freed me up to be able to listen more effectively to other women and to help them to learn to say no. So that's a part of how I wound up here at this moment in time to coach. I, I, I love to coach groups of women, small groups, um, because I think there's wisdom in, in, in energy when we come together and share. You know, so I, I open it up so that women can join a group. But the other thing that I've come to know and, and really enjoy is in each group of women, there's usually a leader. There's usually somebody mm -hmm. who says, let's get together and do this, whether it's go out to lunch, whether it's, you know, let's learn how to play tennis or whatever it is. So I love to get that that woman inspired to, to bring three or four of her friends. And then we then we create a group and I and I coach to that group and to their specific needs, pains, um, where they're overwhelmed, where they're feeling stressed. Well, I think it's wonderful. I think you saw a need and you said, let me feel this need. I have a story. I have experience. I've been through some things and I want to share it with other people. So I love that. And thank you for being that person that saw a need and, and, and met that need. So tell us where we can find you. If there's someone out there listening, tell us where we can, where they can find you on social media. If you have a website, if you have something coming up that maybe they can take a part of, please share with them. Thank you. Um, the easiest way is Coach Sandy Chat, CoachSandyChat.com. That'll get you to everything. Okay. <laughs> so make it simple, right? Yeah. <laughs> That'll get you to the website. That'll lead you to um, free gift. I wrote an ebook that's there designed. To, it's written like a recipe, but it's a recipe for women uh, going through the juggling act of all those hats and how to become more empowered. Now, a lot of women will, will pick that up and take one lesson from it and it'll be great. Um, others will want to follow up and maybe form a group or get into a group. So it all depends. We all have different learning styles. Right. I also have been called in the past couple of weeks. I've just been reading, thinking, plotting, planning, praying, meditating. Um, and the message comes through that women are not celebrating in their lives so they they go on to the next mm -hmm. to do next to do list the next to do list they don't stop and celebrate so i've decided that on friday morning starting next friday that i will be having a coffee celebration at 10 a.m eastern time i will stay on the line for 45 minutes People can drop in for five minutes or 25 minutes and and they can just say, you know what? I walked 5000 steps three times last week or, you know, I I, I didn't cry when somebody um, said no to me. I mean, whatever the celebration is, you know, um, working women, they had a really, really bad day. And and they got up and went back to work again the next day with a better attitude. So there are all sorts of ways and things that we can celebrate yeah. together and in and encourage each other. And, and just the, two days ago, I think in, in my email, I got a message from James Clear who wrote Atomic Habits. And he talked about celebrating. And he said, when you don't have anything that you think worth celebrating, that's when you need to celebrate somebody else because in the giving and the celebrating of somebody else, it lifts your spirit. And that was the last message I needed. And that's when <laughs> February 9th got out of the books. <laughs> well, great. So I will make sure all the information is in the show notes. So if you want to take part of on Fridays or you just need counseling or anything coaching, please reach out and support her. So thank you, Sandy, for being here. Thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for just being a light and creating a space for people who may need what you're offering. So thank you. And I thank you. I think you're a hundred percent on the right track. Storytelling makes us real. I love the story of the Velveteen Rabbit and he's quite real and he's all worn and his satin is worn off. So thank you for, for taking this woman on whose satin may not be as shiny as it was, but her passion is strong. So thank yes, you. Yes, love <laughs> it. 